Hello, and welcome to the first of a series of videos in which I'll be talking you through the basics of a programming language called Python. Python is a programming language which boasts simplicity of its instructions and readability of its scripts. But forget about all that, I picked it because it's easy. Python's been used in a variety of ways, but more notably it's been used for Disney's Toontown Online, Doki Doki Literature Club, Reddit's backend as of 2005, and something to do with NASA. You can code in Python using the programming environment called Idle. This can be downloaded from the Python website, and the best part, it's free. Idle has two ways which we can interact with it, script mode and shell mode. Shell mode allows us to run individual instructions which allow us to test out the code we're unsure of. Script mode allows us to chain together multiple instructions as well as save our programs as we develop them. You'll get to see us using both of these in this first episode. Every program, minus a few weird ones, will follow the same basic pattern. Some data will be input, the data will be processed and stored, and then finally something will be output. We'll start kind of counterintuitively with the output. Information is given out of a program using the print command. We can use it like so. See those quotes there? We'll get to why those are necessary in a future episode. For now, success! We've output some information. Now the input, or in Python, the input. We use this command to gather information from the user of our programs. We do it like so. Straight away there's a problem here with what we've just done, which we'll fix later. Great, we've gathered information from the user, but where did it actually go? Well with the command we've just used, the information was just printed back to the screen to us. It wasn't actually stored anywhere. This is a bit useless to us, because it doesn't actually give us anything to work with. Programming languages make use of something called variables. They're tiny little points of memory which we can save information to. To create a variable, we give it a name, and set it using an equals operator. We then follow that equals operator with a bit of data that we want to stick inside it. On screen now, we're creating a variable called name with the information amber inside it. Great, we can now use this information later on in our program. Try using this variable with the print statement that we saw before. You'll notice that what's printed out isn't actually the name of the variable, rather the data that's inside it. We now have all the basic information that we need to create a simple program. Let's move over to script mode and we'll write our own program from scratch. Just a couple of notes on script mode before we get started. Each instruction you write will be on its own line. You can leave blank lines if you want if it helps you read your code better. In order to run your program you can hit F5 or you can go to run at the top. This will save any of the work you've done so far and the output will appear in the shell window. Right, onto our first program. The goal here is to create a program that asks the user for their name and we're to output this information back to them with a little greeting message. If you think you know what you're doing and you want to have a go at this on your own, pause the video now. Otherwise, let's get started. Now, the first thing we'll want to do in this program is ask the user for their name. We can do that using the input statement that we looked at before. Now, one thing that we didn't look at before was storing data into a variable from this input statement. In order to do this, we create our variable as we'd done before and then follow it with an equals operator, but then we can follow it with the input command. What happens here is whatever the user types in will then be passed into our variable. Because we now have that information stored, we can then show it back to them with a little greeting message. What we can do here is then print out the message hello, and follow that with the plus and then their name. What the plus does is it connects the two messages hello and then whatever they've typed in for their name together. Now it looks like we're all done, we can hit F5 to run it, or we can go to the top and select run. Now this is the part that gets a bit frustrating. Some of you might be faced with a block of red text. This is an error and it's important that you read and understand what each one means, as the messages will help you fix any issues in your code. Each error is made up of a message, as well as the line that the error is from. The general rule of thumb is that very few decent sized programs will run successfully on the first time, and this is fine, it's all part of the software development cycle. It's very easy to become disheartened, but the first step to overcoming these issues is knowing what those error messages mean. There are three very common mistakes that most programmers make. These are a name error, when you've misspelled a function or a variable name, remember everything is case sensitive, an EOF or EOL error, you haven't closed off a bracket or a quote somewhere, and an indentation error. Python uses indents to determine scope. You don't need to know what that means now, we'll get to that in a future episode, but for now, remember to make sure that you haven't added a tab or a space before each of your lines of code. With that in mind, you should be able to find what's wrong with your code and you'll know how to fix it. Once you've got your code working, try running it again. 
And there we have it. We've created a very simple program using the print command, the input command, and a variable along the way. In the next episode, we'll be looking at different types of variables and how they interact with one another. But until then, remember to practice the skills you've learnt, and if you want to do some further reading, then head to the one of the websites that I've put on screen, the links are also in the description. Feel free to leave any criticisms or comments that you might have in the comments section below, otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.